In the previous video, we went over the problem statement for challenge 12 of the QHack 2023 quantum coding challenges. And we describe how this problem is encoded in the form of four possible circuits that uh, are going to be given us at random. And we need to identify in this circuits, which is the qubit that is not connected to this multi-control CX gate. So then we described how we could take this type of circuit and modify it to turn it into a Grover Oracle where the amplified state will be such that it would have the qubits that are connected to this CX gate equal to zero and the unconnected qubit equal to one. So for example, here, the marked element will be state zero one zero zero which corresponds to number four in decimal. So if we come here and look at uh, the fourth column of this unitary matrix, that, that's the only marked element. So that's the one that if we apply Grover's algorithm is going to be amplified. And by checking just from that state where which position the number one is located, we can identify which is the marked qubit. Then we took this oracle and then we run it through Grover's algorithm. So we define our diffuser, which we're going to cover in detail in this video, and then just applied our Oracle and diffuser uh, a number of times so that we can amplify the state of interest. So, so this state 0, 1, 0, 0, which was the mark element in this example. And what we said was that we used a large number of shots and we got this state with high probability. But the issue is that in this particular problem, we're being asked to be able to identify this mark element with 100% probability using only one shot. So obviously, uh, using regular Grover's algorithm, uh, we cannot achieve this. So how do we do this? The problem we have right now is that, as we mentioned before, the number of times we need to repeat this circuit uh, using regular Grover is given by this, this expression here. And this is the exact expression for it. So for one marked element, so for m equal to one, then this r, this number of rounds or number of repetitions, is proportional to the total number of basis states, which is two to the n, right? So, so in our case, n is four, so this is equal to 16. So for 16 states, this r is equal to three. So as we saw in this example that we just went through. So the, one of the possible solutions is to maybe reduce the search space, right? So the reason we need to search over all the 16 states is because here in Grover's algorithm, we're preparing this equal superposition of all possible states. So what if instead of doing that, we just prepare a superposition of just the elements we're interested in, right? So so the elements we're really interested in are states 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 0, right? So basically this will tell us that employee 1 is the lazy employee, this employee 2, employee 3, employee 4. So if we, instead of creating an equal superposition of all states, we create a superposition of just these states, then we are reducing the search space. And the way we can do this is by using what is known as a W state. So a W state is a state where have an equal superposition of just the states where this I is a power of two. So if you, if you see these numbers in binary, this corresponds to one, this corresponds to two, this corresponds to four, this corresponds to eight. That means this is two to the zero, two to the one, two to the two, two to the three. Right, so, so these are states where we only have superpositions of these powers of two, or, you know, in binary is, is given by this expression, right? So if we do this and now calculate this number of rounds, R, uh, we can see here that if we replace now what we had here, which was M, the number of marked states over N, the number of total basis states with one over little n, which is just the number of states of interest, then what we get is that by solving this equation, not only we only get one repetition, 
but we actually get exactly one. So this means that by applying the oracle and the diffuser only once, we will find our mark state with 100% probability with only one shot. So the next question is, would the standard Grover algorithm work if we apply this W state as the input instead of the equal superposition of all states? Now, to answer that question, we really need to review how Grover's algorithm works. So the first step, as we saw before, is to apply Hadamar gates to all the qubits of interest to prepare the equal superposition state. Now, pictorially, we can represent that as values in a graph where the y-axis here represents the probability amplitudes of each of the states. And here on the x-axis, we have um, all, all possible states in this case, I'm just using uh, three qubits, so it's easier to, to express. After preparing the all superposition state, the next thing we do is we apply the oracle that we've been discussing so far. So this oracle will flip the face of some mark element M, and we said this is represented by a matrix where the mark element um, will experience a face flip. So pictorially, we can just represent that as flipping the face about the, the zero axis. The next step is to apply the diffuser. And what the diffuser does is it flips the amplitudes of the states about the mean. So in this graph here, all I'm doing is I haven't performed that face inversion yet. All I'm doing is just representing all the same amplitudes, but I'm just drawing them with respect to the mean. So what is the mean? The mean is just basically the sum of all the probability amplitudes divided by all the number of available states. So with respect to the mean, the distance between each of the probability amplitudes and that mean value is just basically alpha sub i. So alpha sub i is the probability amplitude of state i minus mu. Mu is this mean right here, right? And if we perform that face flip inversion, well, all we get is comparing to this plot above is everything gets flipped with respect to that mean line, right? So the height of this little sticks is the same, right? It's still alpha sub i minus mu, but now it's facing in the opposite direction with respect to that, that mean line. Now, these are the values with respect to the mean, but if we want to express it with respect to the zero point, well, this, each of these amplitudes is now at a value of the mean minus that this, this small height we had before here. So it's mu minus alpha sub i minus mu. So the new probability amplitude after applying that inversion about the mean is two times the mean minus alpha sub i, where alpha sub i was the probability amplitude before applying this inversion about the mean. So what do we need to perform this operation? Well, we need an operator, a unitary operator V that updates the amplitudes. So each alpha sub i nu has to be equal to two times the mean minus the old probability amplitude. Now, as we said before, the mean is given by this value up here. So basically this expression will be two over n plus the sum of all probability amplitudes minus the previous value of the probability amplitude we want to update. So we need to find a matrix, right? A unitary matrix that performs this transformation. So what are the values that this matrix is going to take so that we can update this, this probability amplitudes accordingly. Well, if we focus just on this element right here, well, we're just subtracting from each alpha sub i, the value of alpha sub i that it had before. So that's just like the identity matrix, right? So if we see here, this blue part of it is just the identity matrix. And what would this other part of the equation correspond to? Well. What we need to do is get a sum of over all the probability amplitudes multiplied by this prefactor of two over n. So we can get this prefactor here of two, two over n. And then 
this matrix is just going to be filled with ones. So why all ones? Well, if we take, for example, just alpha sub zero, well, in order to get the sum over all elements, well, we perform the inner product of this row with this column, right? And the inner product of that is just going to be basically one times alpha zero plus one times alpha one. So that's just basically the sum over all of the old probability amplitudes, right? So this matrix basically performs that operation. Now, how do we construct that matrix? Well, it turns out that we can do this by taking two times the outer product of the equal superposition state S. So now we can define our diffuser operator as two times the outer product of the all superposition state minus the identity. And how do we implement this using gates? Well, in order to generate the equal superposition state, all we need to do is apply a Halamar gate to state zero, right? So this is the, the ket of that part of the state. And then the bra is basically the same, but transpose conjugate. Now the Halamard is his own transpose conjugate, so, so we just leave that the same. And then, well, to the identity here, we can just apply Halamard on both sides because this will still give us an identity. And then if we factor things in, we can leave this Halamard gate out here and then get this matrix in the middle of two times the outer product of the zero state minus the identity. Now, what does that matrix correspond to? Well, it's just a two in the first position and then zeros everywhere. And the identity is just the diagonal of ones. So if we perform that subtraction, what we see here is that we get a one on the zero state and then minus ones everywhere else. Well, this is also equivalent to taking out a global face of minus one and then having this minus one for state zero and then once everywhere else. And since global faces don't affect the result of measurements, well, we can just ignore that and look at how we can construct this, this matrix. We're going to call it UF zero, which is basically having the zero state element flip its face. So that just corresponds to a multi-control Z gate that flips the face when all states are zero, but when these states are anything else, it just leaves them unchanged. So the way we construct the circuit for our diffuser is, as we specify here above, we apply Halamar gates followed by this multi-control Z gate that gets activated when all states are zero, which by the way, is also the same as having a control Z gate with all states activated at one with X gates before and after applying that, that Z gate. And then lastly, we apply another Halamar gate, which if we go back here and look at our diffuser, that's exactly what we had, right? Halamar gates, X gate, a multi-control Z gate, X gates and Halamar gates. So let's now repeat this exercise of seeing how each of the steps in Grover's algorithm uh, affect the different probability amplitudes of, of our states. But instead of starting with the equal superposition state, let's start with the W state, right? So instead of uh, having uh, all probability amplitudes uh, at the same value of uh, alpha i, let's say we apply this operator W to prepare this W state, where as we can see here, only the states with a single one in them have uh, an amplitude of to, to begin with one over root n, and then all the other states are equal to zero. So again, in this case, I'm only using three qubits to make the visualization easier, but in our problem, we, we are interested in four qubits, right? So what if we uh, first apply this initialization and then we apply our oracle. Well, the oracle will perform the correct operation, right? It will, if our mark element is one of these three elements, right? Let's say zero, one, zero, then it will flip the face of, of that state accordingly. And now if we looked at the states about the mean, and now one thing to keep in mind here is that the mean 
is going to be a lot lower than what we had before because uh, here we're taking it uh, with respect to all states. So, so this will be what regular Grover would do, right? And a lot of these states are equal to zero. So that mean will be uh, a lower value. And then here's the critical part. What if we apply the regular Grover diffuser that just flips all states about this, this mean? Well, what's going to happen here is that the states that were at zero get amplified, right? And, and that's not what we want. We don't want to amplify any of the states because they're not even in our search space, right? They're not even possible solutions to our problem. Our only marked element is this one right here, which does get amplified, but what we need is to be able to identify it with very high probability or, you know, even probability of one. So using this regular Grover diffuser doesn't seem to do what we need. So how can we modify our diffuser to achieve our goal? So what we really need is a diffuser that flips the amplitudes of the states we're interested in, right? That way we can amplify the marked element, but that will leave the amplitude of all the other states equal to zero. So we don't want to flip the face of, of the states we're not interested in about uh, the mean. So how do we achieve that? Well, what this means is that we need an operator that our alpha sub i nu would only update the states that are powers of two, right? So, so the state 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, and so on and so forth till 1, 0, 0, 0, right? And it does it in a way where the new amplitude is going to be the mean of all those states, just the ones that, that we have, minus the previous probability amplitude. And then for all the other states, we just want them to leave them at zero. Now we can say, well, those states can just take uh, the value of minus alpha sub i because they start with amplitude of zero. So if we just say that they're just going to stay the same, it, it doesn't make a difference. The reason we do this is because we want these two to match so that we can apply just an identity matrix. And that's what we're, we're going to, to look into next, right? So what we need is some matrix where this element um, perform this operation we just described. And, and what would that be? Well, same as before, for the blue part of this update, what we need is just an identity matrix here in blue, right? And then for the rest, what we want is that if the state is not a power of two, we just want to get zero, right? So we don't have this mean computation here, right? So in the case of alpha sub zero, for example, which corresponds to probability amplitude of the all zero states, what we want is to have a row that is just zeros so that when we multiply them with the all probability amplitudes, we still get zero. But then for alpha sub one, which corresponds to the probability amplitude of the state zero, zero, all the way to the last qubit at one, for that one, we do want to have this summation uh, of the mean of just the W states, right? So in that case, what we want to have in this row is ones, whatever uh, we have a power of two. So in this case, this will be this, the one corresponding to state zero, zero, one. This one will be zero, 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 one, zero. Then this one, for example, will be the state one, zero, zero, zero. And then the last one will be the state one, one, one. So in, the, in that case, we have a zero, right? So basically we want ones wherever we have an element that corresponds to that W state. And we will have them in the rows that map to those states too. And it turns out that this is very similar to what we were doing in regular Grover, in which the way we implement this matrix is by taking two times the outer product of the W state. So before we, we had two times the outer product of the S state or the equal superposition state. And in this case, we just have the W state. So 
because of that, it should be very easy to implement this matrix. If, if we have a procedure to generate a W state, it shouldn't be a problem to, to also implement this matrix. The way we would do that is very similar to what we did before for regular Grover. So our diffuser is going to be two times minus the outer product of the W state minus the identity. And then we do the same procedure. We, the way we, we prepare a W state is we apply this W operator, which we're going to discuss in a minute, to the zero state. And then the bra version of that is the bra of zero. But then here we need to take the transpose conjugate of that W operator, because unlike the Hallamar gate, uh, it is not its own transpose conjugate. And then in the case of the identity, again, this is also equal to just having the identity here. And then we can factor things in. And it turns out that what we have here in the middle is again, the same operator we have before, which corresponds to just a multi-control Z gate that gets activated when all states are equal to zero. So again, very similar to what we had for the traditional Grover, but then we need to change two things in our circuit, right? The state preparation needs to use this W operator. So prepare the superposition of the power of two states. And then the diffuser, instead of having Hallamards in between this multi-control Z gate, needs to have that operator and its transpose conjugate. So now let's go ahead and make the changes necessary to adapt the standard Grover algorithm to what we just described. So what we need to do first is replace this Hallamar gates that prepare the equal superposition state with a block that prepares a W state. Now I'm not going to describe how the circuit can be generated. A few years ago, I created this lengthy notebook where I explain step by step how um, you can develop an algorithm to generate uh, the circuit necessary to implement a W state with an arbitrary number of qubits. So all we're going to do here is just copy and paste uh, this, this code that, that generates the function needed to create the circuit. So uh, let's go ahead and, and, and do that here. And if uh, now I just create a circuit with, let's say, three qubits, and let's display its state vector and the circuit itself. Here we can see this is the, the circuit that would generate a three qubit W state, where uh, we only have uh, one qubit equal to one and the rest equal to zero. And if I change it to four here, we will generate a, a larger circuit that also generates the correct W state. So with that, what we can do next is to find the right diffuser that we will need to implement this modified version of Grover's algorithm, which by the way, this generalization of Grover, where we use a different state preparation and a different diffuser is typically known as amplitude amplification. So uh, in case you're interested in learning more about it, you can, you can go ahead and, and do a Google search for that and you'll find uh, probably uh, some information on, on this. So our diffuser now is going to be identical to what we had before, but instead of having uh, Hallamar gates, we're just going to first append the um, inverse of our W state and then uh, the W state in between the X gates and the multi-control Z gate uh, needed. So here I'm just going to display that circuit and its matrix uh, for four qubits. So here we have it. So we have our multi-control Z gate and the X gates to guarantee that uh, we're activating this uh, when we have the all zeros state and then the transpose conjugate of the W state generation circuit and uh, W. And here we can see the matrix where um, we have where we have an identity for the, el the elements that do not correspond to the W state and then, and then the average minus identity for the ones that do correspond to states with only one qubit equal to one. So the next thing we're going to do is actually 
redefine our oracle. Uh, the reason for that is because if you watch the previous video, what we did before was we modify our oracle to guarantee that we would we would get only one marked element uh, and, and we will get rid of, of the all one state uh, being marked. Uh, so, so we added this additional multi-control Z gate. But now since we have reduced our search space and we're only initializing this, the input state to the W state, we don't even need to worry about this 111 state getting amplified uh, because it's not even part of the initialization. So, so we don't need to modify our uh, oracle. We can just get rid of this MZZ uh, gate. So it's the same code we had before, but without that gate. And then we're just going to do exactly what we had before uh, to determine the number of rounds. So in this case, the exact value is one, as we described before, because we have initialized our state to the W state. So we've reduced our search space to only four elements, and we're only trying to find one marked element. And then at random, we picked one of the disconnected qubits and then here we're going to now implement Grover's algorithm. So this is the exact same code we, we had before. It's just that we are now using the new Oracle and the new uh, diffuser. And then here we see that it's only apply one time, right? And if we decompose the circuit, we can see here uh, our W state preparation, our Oracle that doesn't have that uh, multi-control Z gate anymore then our new diffuser. And again, we just had these gates for preparing the minus state and then uh, for the uncomputation of that minus state. And then if we run our simulation, we can see that with probability of one, we have identified uh, the, the state of interest. And you know, here we're running it for multiple shots, but we can just change this to one shot and we're always gonna get this state with probability one. So no matter how many times we run it, we're always gonna get the right element. All right, so all we have left is now to implement this in penny lane. So let's go ahead and as always implement penny lane as QML and NumPy. And here I'm just going to define the circuit that implements the preparation of this W state, but now using uh, penny lane functions, right? So here I'm, I'm using poly X and, you know, rotation uh, of uh, CRY gates and CNOT gates. And then um, next I'm going to define the device that we're given in this problem, which is going to have the wires with the employees and the wire for the result. And then we specify wires equals wires. And then we're going to define our Q node which is going to have Grover's algorithm. So I'm just going to copy and paste all of that here. So we have, first we prepare the minus state on the results wire. Then we prepare the input W state by calling that uh, W circuit uh, generator. Then we specify the Oracle. And here, this project execution is a function that we're gonna be given uh, for the greater. So this is going to be executed 5,000 times where this project execution is going to be one of those four possible circuits. And uh, for now, so we can just check our code. I'm going to uh, comment that out and just manually specify one of those multi-control gates where here I'm just having employee two uh, be the disconnected qubit. So then we have um, our X gates our multi-control X gate, X gates again for the Oracle. And then the diffuser is like what we had before, the adjoint of that uh, W state preparation, then uh, poly X gates, multi-control X gate. Uh, so here, this part of the circuit, what it's doing is that multi-control Z gate. And the way I'm doing it here is by having actually a multi-control X gate where the target qubit is on the results qubit where we have that minus state preparation. So this is just equivalent to having a multi-control Z gate just on the control qubits, uh, but implemented just uh, with an X gate. Uh, then lastly, we have that uh, W state preparation circuit. 
and then the uncomputation of the minus state. So let's go ahead and run that. And, and here we, we have sample, um, we're sampling just uh, the control wires. And uh, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that when we define our device, uh, we specify only having one shot. So if we now draw our circuit and we're, we're here, I'm passing just a value of zero because this function is supposed to take as an input this project execution unitary which will be the gate given to us but uh, that's just for the grader so I'm not using it right now anywhere here in the code I'm just commenting that out so um, I'm just going to draw the circuit and and see the sampled output so uh, just remember the employee that we marked was employee 2 so here we have uh, the minus state preparation, W state preparation, our uh, Oracle followed by our diffuser, which has the uh, adjoint of the W state preparation circuit, then our uh, multi-control Z gate, which we're implementing actually using a multi-control X gate where the target qubit is just um, on that minus state. And then the W state preparation circuit. And if we look at our output, uh, this will be employee one, employee two, employee three, employee four. So the mark one is employee two. So let's now change that to, for example, uh, having employee three be the marked uh, or the lazy employee. And if we do that, uh, we can see here that now employee three is the one that uh, comes out with a one. And if we repeat that measurement, we see that we always get uh, the same result. So lastly, um, this is a function that is used for just a grader uh, that uh, maps the result to uh, the, the wire itself. So if I run that here, um, I need to pass our circuit. And if you see, this should give me the name of the employee. So this, this gives E3. And if I change that to, let's say now, um, E4, employee 4 being the marked element, then this function should uh, now return E4. And then lastly, I'm just going to copy and paste uh, all the code used in the grader. And in order to execute this, what we need to do is remove this multi-control X gate that we were using to manually check our code and uh, now use this project execution, which is just applying the same thing, but at random, right? And, and our code, or the grader is going to run our code uh, 5,000 times to verify that um, we can always find the, the right lazy employee. And this takes a little while to, to run, but here we have it. Uh, we, we can see that we got the correct result. So I hope these two videos were helpful and uh, as always, please let me know if you have any questions.